Welcome back to MyJuryBunch.com. Today we'll be covering part one of a two-part series, which is the design of this engagement ring. In part two, we'll be covering the wedding band, the matching wedding band for this. I want to thank all my Patreon supporters for their support. And you, uh, the Patreon supporters, can download these particular models right from the Patreon site and will be up there within a couple of days. Thank you for your support. Uh, we will also be covering the 3D printing of these in the frozen castable wax-like resin. However, I probably will not be casting these, but I will show you the results of the 3D print. So let's get started. Okay guys, to get started, the first thing we have to do is start with a new blank screen. We're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add in a curve circle. I'm going to size this curve up to about a size 17 or a 17 millimeter, 17 millimeters in diameter. I am going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to rotate that along the X axis, RX90. And just in case my screencast keys are not on, so now that we get those on there, uh, with the circle selected, I'm going to hit Control A and apply all transformations. So now what we don't want to do is we want to give this our, our little design at the top. So I'm going to go into edit mode and then we have the top here. I want to move one point here left or right and I want to move the other one in the opposite direction. So I'm going to do that from looking down at the top view. So with that dot selected I will hit 7 on my keypad or go to top view using the tilt key and I'm going to move this up four lines. So right about there. So I've got one, two, three, four. And now we want to do the same with this one. We want to move that down four lines right about there. Now with that done, I'm going to go into my side view and look at this. And to make this a perfect circle, I'm just going to grab this dot here. I'm going to hold the shift key down, grab that dot there. And I'm going to hit S and then X. And I'm going to size it out just a little bit to give that more of a circle shape. There we go. And that is the design of our ring. I'm going to go into object mode so we can see that. The next thing we want to do is give this some dimension and to do that we're going to use the curve properties tab. So let's bring that over. I'm going to make this a little bigger. We'll come down to the curves properties tab and I am going to select active spline and the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to increase the res resolution to 64. And we'll leave it at 60. So with that done I've got my curve shape here. Now what I want to do is give this some dimension and to do that I need to right click on it. I'm going to shade flat so that we can see what it looks like. I'm going to zoom this out just like so and that looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. And now I'm going to come over to my modifiers tab, select add modifier, come down to solidify and then I am going to give this a thickness oh, until I'm pretty happy with it just going to eyeball it to about here. So if I look at that from the side view, that looks pretty good. From the other side, I'm kind of liking the way that looks. Now it's time to convert this to a mesh. So with that selected, I am going to right click on this and come down to uh, wherever the convert to mesh is, which is right here. And when I do that, it's going to apply the existing modifier, which is the solidify Meyer modifier and convert this to a mesh. So there we go. If I go into edit mode now, you can see this is a mesh. Okay, so here's our mesh. We've got basically one side of it. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a loop in the middle. I'm going to come down, select my edge tool. I'm going to press Control R and I'm going to put an edge loop or a loop cut right through the middle of that. Press Enter twice. With that edge loop selected, I'm going to press P to separate it. Once that's separated, now I can go back into object mode, select this ring, we can get our cursor to click on it. There it is. And I want to convert that to a curve. So I will select that, come to object, 
convert to a curve. Now I will call this, I'm going to select it right here, we'll call this gem path. Just so we have a name on it. And the next thing I want to do is take my object, go back into edit mode, select all, and then I'm going to add in a modifier to mirror this. And when I'm happy with that, I will go back into object mode and then hit apply. So now I've got one ring that you can see here uh, with the shape that I was looking for. And I have the, the path that I want for my diamond. So let's go back into object mode and then select our path. And you can see it right there. That being done, the next thing to do is add in the gemstones that I want. And I want seven gemstones along each side. Maybe six. We'll do six gemstones along each side. And I'm going to make those about two millimeters in diameter. So let's go to our jewel craft tab. We're going to hit add gem. I'm going to select 2.0 millimeters and then hit OK. And there's our gem. Now that might be a little bit too big and it sure does look big. So let's get rid of that X. And let's come down to jewel craft, do add, and let's do uh, 1.5 millimeter. That looks about right. So with that diamond selected, now I want to select our path because we've converted that to a curve. So now we can make our gemstones follow along that. So I will hit the shift key and then try to select my path. So let's do that. Actually, let's grab our path. Let's size this up a bit. There we go, right there. Select our diamonds. Now it's a little easier to select our path. Shift, then select the path so both objects are selected. And then hit Curve Scatter. With that done, now we want to move the end point and the start point. So I'm going to hit uh, Start. We'll bring that all the way over to here. And then the end point. Let's just get that all the way over there. I'm going to tilt these 180 degrees so that there are facing upward. Let's rotate that around and let's drop this down to six diamonds. Now we're going to have a head in the middle but I want to move my starting point to about here and then I'm going to move my end point diamonds so that my diamonds are kind of close together. I like them to be about like so. And I don't want my diamonds to come past this so I'm going to actually change this to five and move my end point to about here. How about if we bump that up to six and bring that in? Uh, no, it's still not bad. Let's go back to five. And then I'll bring that down. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. So something about like so. <clears throat> so there's my first row of diamonds. I like the way that looks. And with that done, now what I'm going to do is do the exact same thing with five diamonds on the other side. So I will add in another gem. One and a half millimeters. I'm going to add that there. I'm going to select that with the mouse and I will grab my arch or my path. So we can do a curve scatter. And now we've got five gemstones. We want these on the opposite side. So let's move that down to here. Let's move the end point to about there. I'm going to look at this from the top view and just see where I need to move my gemstones to get them in approximately the same position. That looks about right. And looks like our starting point needs to come up just a little bit. That looks good right there. Okay, so with that done, now what I need to do is add in my prongs. So I'm going to add in my prongs to these five diamonds. We'll just do prongs. And I am going to rotate those. We've got two prongs. So I'm going to rotate those to about like so. And then we're going to grab this last one here. I'm going to add in another prong. We're just going to do one. I'm going to rotate that prong so that it is on the opposite side just about like so and we're going to do the same to this one add in a prong we'll just use one and then rotate it into position right about like so and that one needs to come up just a little bit more a little thicker so far so good okay so far so good that's our first row now let's do these 
shift select each of the five gemstones come to prongs and then I can rotate these around to the point where I like them that looks pretty good now let's select this one and then add in one prong and rotate that to about here and then we're going to do the same with this diamond and for some reason that one got small again so we're going to bump that up a little bit right about there and let's bring that up right about like so and that is that the next step I need to do is make sure that these prongs are all part of our mesh so I'm going to select our ring I'm going to hold the shift key down and select each of these prongs like so I'm going to come over to the edit menu select my boolean tool and then union and that should change all of those prongs into one object now we will select each of these prongs make sure you don't select anything but the prongs and then select the ring and then union now our ring is all one object our diamonds are in there and then what we have to do is add the cutters so I'm going to select all of these diamonds one at a time I'm going to select cutters in the jewel craft tool and it adds in the cutters gives us the depth that we want I think we're looking pretty good right there so now I'm going to select each of these cutters individually so shift select each of those then I'm going to select my ring I'm going to come over to the edit tab select boolean difference and then we will just double check to make sure that we have no errors in our mesh that looks pretty good and now I'm going to grab these one two three four five I'm going to select the ring last and then do difference again and then we will check there we're looking good okay so there's our ring looks pretty good to me the next thing I have to do is add in a head so I'm going to use my uh, blender gems library I'm going to go over here I'm going to grab a diamond we're going to grab a round diamond I'm going to hit append okay with the di diamond selected I'm going to come over to the items tab and our tools and then just size that up to six and a half millimeters yeah, about there I'm going to bring that up and so far so good let's do this one three this has got to come over just a little bit because we're not quite lined up we're good enough for government work now I want to add in the head that I want to use I think I'm going to use a four prong round head so let's go back to our blender gems library come down to heads select round right there and let's find a nice four prong head that looks pretty slick well, how about this one curved I like that append I'm going to bring this up look at it from the side view let's hide our diamond okay so let's zoom into that let's grab this and move that into the middle right about yay that looks good right there and then I'm going to size that up so it's about like so let's make our diamond visible now let's size this down SZ I'm gonna make this a little shorter about like so uh, put it right about there let's bring our diamond down and I think I'm almost happy with that shift SZ shift SZ I'm gonna size that on up want to size the head shift SZ let's make that head just a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller about like so SZ gonna make that a little shorter there we go. that looks good okay that my friends is our ring it's pretty much that simple to do something like that 
you just take your time and work with it. Um, don't be afraid to go ahead and get in there and make mistakes. Um, you will find that sometimes things don't work properly, but you just have to get in there and just do it. And I'm going to render this out so we see what the final result is. So guys, that's pretty much how we make this ring. Um, it's not that difficult, and this is pretty much ready for 3D printing. And I think I will go ahead and give this a test print to see how well this prints in 3D printing La La Land. And we will see what it looks like when it's done. But I did want to show you how to get that design done. That's a pretty simple design, very easy. Um, and then it also gives you the ability to actually go in here later if you save this model and you can go back there and make a custom wedding band to fit this just about perfectly. So I will show that to you in one of the next videos. If you like this video guys, please give it a thumbs up and it helps my channel grow. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing and hitting the not notification bell and then every time I upload a new video about whether it's ring designs, watch repairs, watch reviews, or 3D printing reviews and 3D printing stuff, um, go ahead and, and you'll, be, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I hope you enjoy this channel and if you can, uh, if you like this channel, please share it with your friends. It helps my channel grow and I appreciate it. Thanks very much and have a great day guys.